The Doppler effect is named after the Austrian mathematician and physicist Christian Andreas Doppler, who first put forward the idea in Prague in 1842. Thanks to his research, Doppler clarified how the frequency of waves changes with the velocity of their source. His hypothesis was tested by a number of different scientists over the years, and shown to work in every case. Eventually, the phenomenon he described became known as the Doppler effect. We often observe this effect in our daily lives. Imagine that an ambulance is approaching you. The sound of the ambulance's siren is high-pitched. But as the ambulance passes you and starts to recede, the sound changes to a lower pitch. The shift from higher to lower pitch is quite obvious. During the approach, the sound waves reaching your ears are squashed together so that their wavelength is shortened. As the ambulance moves away, the sound waves become more stretched out and the wavelength gets longer. Shorter wavelength means higher frequency and higher pitch. Longer wavelength means lower frequency and lower pitch. So, in front of the ambulance are high frequency sound waves and at the back are low frequency sound waves. This is the Doppler effect as it applies to sound. Light travels as waves as well. As a result, we can observe the Doppler effect on light. If we take a closer look at the electromagnetic spectrum of light, colors are ordered by frequency, wavelength, and energy. The color red has the lowest frequency, while blue and violet have the highest frequencies. According to the Doppler effect, if a light source approaches us, its color is seen as being more blue, while if the light source moves away, its color is seen as being more red. However, in order for the effect to be noticeable, the speed of the light source has to be very high, hundreds or even thousands of kilometers per second. In 1929, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble observed galaxies using a specially equipped telescope. He found that the light from almost all galaxies, except a few of the very closest ones, was shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. That meant that all galaxies are moving away from us. Hubble had shown that the universe doesn't have a constant volume, but on the contrary, is expanding. This meant that in the past, the universe must have been much smaller. At some point, it must have exploded from a tiny volume. This event, in which the universe began, became known as the Big Bang. 